How's it going, Gray Boys? It is week 10. We're sitting at 7-1, number six in the country, almost to that top five. And we have a game this week against Indiana at home. And the Hoosiers are four and three. It's not looking good for them. They are a lower overall than us by, I think, a pretty fair margin. The only thing they're better at is their rush offense. They get eight more rushing yards per game than us. Um, but I just, I mean, I hate to say it, but I don't think I'm worried about this game at all. Now, that could be one of the worst things to say because this could now become a trap game. But I still feel confident as far as teams in front of us. Two of them have one loss. Three of them are undefeated. Two of them will have to play at some point. Stanford and USC. Uh, do they play each other regular season? Uh, they don't play each other regular season. USC still has a ranked Tennessee and Notre Dame to get through. Uh, but they will for sure meet up in the Pac-12 championship game. For Stanford, it's just Oregon, Cal, and Iowa who have a combined 12 wins. So, uh, that's a just above 500 pairing or I guess trio. But we are in a really, really good spot. Uh, if you look bottom right, XP wise, we have 12,500 XP out of the 16,430 that we need to level up. And we desperately need to level up because if we go to our recruiting, we are falling behind 85 points a week on Elliot Erdman, the 90 overall center. Florida has a visit coming in a couple of weeks time and our visit is until week 13. The problem is if we get locked out, we can't unlock the door because we've used all three on people like Christian Gamel, where it's worked out tremendously. Uh, but if we level up, we should be able to put one more level into the unlock skill and just maybe we can jump right up the board with Erdman and potentially go into next year with an incredible offensive line. Now we have a couple of guys who we are in the lead with without scholarship offers. So that's what we're going to use our first bit of recruiting points this week for just to see maybe if we can snag an insta commit all of them above 70 overall jared Wright doesn't go quay foreman okay we're probably not gonna get a single one uh and tasha mcpherson the last one the good running back what is he 77 overall we're in the lead with him 96 speed 89 acceleration pretty good spin move you know i like the spin well it uh, you know sometimes it works that way no insta commits this week Again, we do only have the one level into the insta commit, and that's all we're allowed to have just to keep things from becoming too cheesy, but that's fine. Just Jonathan Westerkamp, the athlete who we like a little bit more than Taji McPherson. We are going to fill him up with points, I think. Give him 650, see if we can start to get him locked. A lot of the guys who we uh, are in interesting spots with are low lock cheese guys, so it's going to be an interesting end to the season. We have a few weeks to go, so... Things could definitely change. And on this ready for visit, Cooper Gentry should commit pretty soon. Jalen Smith should commit relatively soon. And Alec Bemis should commit. Uh, well, I actually don't know if we'll get him to commit, but we are going to send all three of these guys this week to this Indiana game. Uh, try and get the visits out of the way as soon as possible. Try to get them committed as soon as possible so that we can uh, start spending those points on other players. One thing that sprang up at the end of last week that we noticed is that RJ Rivera, our true freshman running back, is fourth now in the Heisman watch list. I think this is the first Eastern player we've even seen on this board. I'm not certain that we can keep him on this board, uh, but he has been having really good games all season long. So uh, does he deserve it over some of these quarterbacks or the Georgia running back? I'm not certain. But you never know if he can start to do a little bit better on his kick returns and we can find him in open space on offense. Maybe, just maybe, we could have him winning the most prestigious award in all of college football. As we head into this game, it's just a 74 overall for Indiana with a 74 offense and a 76 defense. Uh, and unfortunately for them, we are trying to score as many points as possible. We need the XP as much as we can get, so... Uh, it's just, it's going to be rough no matter what. Let's throw Indiana into those camo uniforms. I haven't actually, uh, seen those before. Uh, so we'll just let them wear the camo. It's close enough to white, close enough to an away. And well, we don't want to be wearing white, not at a home game. So we'll go green with, uh, well, we'll just go full green. I, I think it's one of my favorite looks that we have. So we'll rock that and loading in here again their best rank on offense is their pass offense 98th in the country 
their best rank on defense. Actually 24th and with 21 points allowed, but they're only scoring uh, just under 18. Meanwhile, we are giving up less than 14 and scoring 34. So this is looking pretty good. A couple of guys visiting again. We're not too worried about picking uh, any of those goals up. If they happen, they happen. The three sacks with the deep line, honestly, is pretty likely to happen if Indiana comes out and tries to pass the ball a lot. All of our top players are on hot streaks, and we're going to hope that that continues as Murray State, 1,500 passing yards already with 23 total touchdowns is nice. Their top players, 88 overall wide receiver, an 85 overall center, and an 84 overall punter. And they have some injuries. Their quarterback out with a forearm fracture for the season. So the team that's already 74 overall is going to be playing a little bit worse. And that's only good news for us. Good to be back home at Rainierson too, as honestly, at this point in the season, as nice of a day as it looks, it's probably incredibly cold out here in the Ipsy. They're going to go with tails, which never fails. Correct decision from Indiana. And we're going to be starting with the football. Just a five mile an hour breeze. But man, that's probably going to bring quite a bit of wind chill for the day. So let's see what RJ can do early in this one. Uh, man, 69 points or higher is definitely the goal in this game. And RJ Rivera almost got the corner there. Let's see what we can do on offense on this opening drive. Giving it to RJ, trying to get out wide. I don't see anything. Cutting it back inside. We got three. I, you know, I just don't feel comfortable going to the outside sometimes. And that was one of them. I think the first play of the game. It's pretty important to make sure that we're getting positive yards. So that was the case there. I'm just going to get the pitch out early to RJ. I don't think that was necessarily the right decision. But I can't allow uh, Maurice Tate to get injured in this game. He got beaten up after, a, you know, a record-setting performance last game. Got knocked out for the last about quarter and a half as Derek Bentley comes in. Oh, that was rough. Oh, almost didn't get the first down, but we convert it. And the big thing here, if we're going to score a lot of points, is just getting Maurice uh, throwing accurately early in this one. So kind of looking just to go for a check down. Derek Bentley is going to just get back to the line of scrimmage, but that's fine. And the sooner he gets heated up again, the better things are going to go for us. Stepping back, just waiting outside the pocket. B's open. A could be open. That's a terrible throw. Fine with it going out of bounds. I can't be trying to make that for the second attempt uh, of Maurice Tate's day. Good news is Indiana shouldn't be too difficult to beat throughout the day. I don't expect to lose this game. It might be difficult to score a ton of points, but we're going to just go slip screen and... <laughs> Lose six yards. I was going to say this is four down territory, but I think we got to punt this one away. That's a pretty disappointing start to the game as we'll just try and... Well, I just shanked that. We need a really good bounce. We didn't quite get it, but it does go out of bounds at the 25. So essentially a touchback. And that's going to give our defense a chance to go to work. I don't know what to expect out of this offense. Probably expecting some running early on. So we'll see what we can do there. It's a toss out to the edge. Logan just got obliterated we have conservative tackling on and myron hughes just shoved him to the dirt now second and three i will say this is actually probably good news for us as they're gonna go in the hurry up and my goodness this guy still not down rolls over the defender so somehow he gets the first down devin royal just uh helped him out quite a bit another first down expecting a run this one gonna be up the middle finally logan gets in there that's the stop that we needed Legitimately, this feels like it might be the quickest hurry up I've ever been against. It's going to be an option this time. Quarterback gets stopped. Good play from Rawls there. Took away the pitch and then got the tackle. That'll give us the third and 14 to work with. And we'll try to get some pressure with Smith. I would love to get a sack. Maybe force this quarterback to make a bad throw. And it's Whitaker who finally got an interception last week. But he gives up 11 yards. Thankfully, still fourth down. And midway through this first quarter, it's going to be one punt for each team on their opening drives. Not sure who's going to be able to get it going first. You would hope us, seeing as we are number six in the nation. But you never know, as Avery Binkley just pancaked a man. And we're starting to pick up some blocks with RJ Rivera. That is beautiful. All right, this drive is all about getting Maurice going. Uh, he's got to be involved in every single play if we want to win this game. And... That's going to be a decent seven-yard read option on first down. And I got to go with the triple option. I feel like we have them in a really good spot here. Handing it off to RJ Rivera. He's got some blocks as he runs up the middle, and that gets us across midfield for the first time. Still not sure if we're in the right spot to try and pass with Maurice downfield over the middle. Yep, that, <laughs> that was thrown to A. Uh, that is not a good sign early in this one. 
It always has been the case that with Maurice, we just have to get lucky. Seems to be true today as we're throwing a little mid screen to Bentley. Didn't quite have the blocks, but man, I don't know how he got nine yards there. I'm feeling pretty confident with that one on this third down outside the pocket. Just throw the dump off to RJ. I know he's going to be able to get that first down. It was only a yard necessary and he got three. And the goal here is to score before the first quarter comes to a close. A minute and 30 left. Stepping back. B is open. Still not quite there. Chris Rucker could have had it, but Maurice is now 4-7 through the air. I don't know how many completions we're going to need for him to be ready, but a slip screen could be useful. Derek Bentley needs to outrun that big boy. He's not going to do so. There's a flag down. This is almost certainly going to be a clipping, isn't it? Oh, that's just what we needed. Well, second and 25 now. Uh, <laughs> things aren't looking too great, but we're going to try a little swing screen. Derek Bentley breaks the first tackle. Can't break the second. It's third and 29. Oh, th that's not good at all. The uh, problem is I don't think that Maurice can do anything. So uh, Stone's going in motion. We're not going to be able to run for this. So throw the swing screen. Stone actually has quite a bit of space there. Would have been nice if we needed 10 yards. Too bad we needed 29 and it's fourth and a mile. There is absolutely zero chance that we can go for this one. So we will just go ahead and attempt to cough and corner these guys. Seemed like an okay kick. That went out of bounds at like the 20, though. Their offense is going to be able to take over from the 18. Fully expecting a run on this one. I'm bringing Royal out of position. And they will step back to pass. But Royal gets there. <laughs> Drills the quarterback for a loss of nine. That's actually going to end our first quarter. So at least the defense has something going. But if we're trying to score 69 points, I don't know how it's going to happen. 0-0 zero, zero, a quarter in. It's going to be tough. Kind of want to bring pressure again. We're going to bring Royal. They're going to pitch it to the outside. Rawls needs to get that tackle. <sighs> that one was really weird. Good play from Indiana to get positive yards. I was really hoping they would go to the air and we could try to get a sack or something, but that's not the case. Will We or we will expect that, I should say, on third and 13. Could see a slip screen here. And, man, the protection on that quarterback is something else Whitaker gets the interception holds on to it he picks up a block and Whitaker is gonna get the pick six of the defense stepping up to get into the end zone first oh my gosh two interceptions in two weeks he has had a case of the drops he's all season long but maybe has started to figure out how to catch things in the cold and man we don't see a lot of defensive touchdowns here that's nice to see I think I would be lying if I said I wasn't intrigued by the thought of just kicking it onside uh, every kickoff this game just to try and steal something. Oh my gosh, Sandcastle. Uh, he might go to jail for murder after that hit. Going to be very curious to see what it is that these guys do with the offense. Kind of expecting a run to the left on first down. Going to try to cover off the corner with Logan and it is going to be a run to the edge. Logan's there to stuff it. Oh, we read that one perfectly. Really went run commit and it paid off. Backup Jason Green getting the stop. They're getting credited with the stop on that play is just fine. Kind of expecting another run this one. A play action. I left my man open, but I wasn't alone in getting beat as they find Bruce Moore for 17 the first down. Indiana has uh, one of those offenses that I could see causing us some problems all game long as, oh my gosh, Doucette thankfully gets tackled at the line. I got fooled out of my shoes on what was happening there. Second and 10. They got to go to the air on this one. Problem is I can't get pressure on this quarterback. Could be picked off green. Oh, this man just dropped it. Third and 10. Well, we're going to be expecting a pass on this third down. So out with the dime package. No screen. Smith getting the pressure. Quarterback has to get it away. And he found Steve Richardson, but uh, that's not going to do him all that much. All right, well, we have a defensive touchdown. Special teams touchdown would be pretty nice. An easy way to get some points. And with the way our defense has played all season long, I think it could be quicker for us to score that way. RJ Rivera needs to get to the corner. Some really fast players on this special teams for Indiana. It's a 20-yard return. Sets up the offense, but, man, they have not done much there. So 4-10 left in the half. We need... A lot of touchdowns, <laughs> if I'm being honest. Not sure where it's going to come from. RJ Rivera on the counter has a nice block and gets us a first down. I'm going to be in the hurry up for pretty much this entire drive as we'll try a play action here. Getting outside the pocket. A coming open. And that's 
man, still not accurate, especially not on the run. Definitely not enjoying the fact that we can't pass the football forward. Uh, but we can run it relatively successfully right now, so we have that going for us. Derek Bentley gets six on the first attempt. We're going to move Jody Gentry in motion, trying to get some blocking out of the way. And Bentley has a first down and a little bit more. How about a little read option? This one, very sus. Maurice is going to keep it. Can he get the right blocks? The spin move works. Makes a man missing. He's got a first down before stepping out of bounds with 3.30 left on the clock. Well, if we can't utilize Maurice's arm, we might as well utilize the legs as we'll try a triple option on this one. And this, oh, it was screaming touchdown. Oh my gosh. I don't know what RJ Rivera was doing. He like stopped mid play and got behind. And so we basically throw an interception there. I'm not gonna lie. The offense is just infuriating me. Never have I felt the need to score points more and we can't get into the end zone just getting demolished play in and play out is they're going to go play action and they've got a guy wide open. They've completed more downfield passes than we have. The annoying part of that is I know for, for a fact that uh, our quarterback is going to be a lot better than theirs. They're going to pass it over the middle very easily, very successfully for five yards and a first down. So far, I'd say this game is an absolute disaster as we're going to try to bring pressure, but it's QB sneak. Whitaker gets in there to get a hit, but... They just completed it to, like, a an offensive lineman. No idea what's going on, and, like, I just feel like they're ready to run at any moment, but they keep going with these play actions. It's working tremendously well. Quarterback throwing it across his body, turfs it, it's third and four. Problem with this spot is they could very much just run the ball here. Split backs on this third down with two and a half minutes left. It looks like they're going to step back to pass. Quarterback gets hit and sacked. I get to take a timeout here, fourth and 12. Seems to me like the only thing we have today is our defense. Uh, the offense completely MIA at the moment. Need Napoleon to set a nice block, and RJ's going to need, well, a miracle to find the end zone the way that I've been returning it recently. This has just been brutal. Can I bring Chris Rutger in motion? Try to bring that guy out of the area. We're running a counter here. I want as much space as possible for RJ to work with. As, oh, he almost made both of those guys miss. He got six yards, though. Time for me to try and get a pass off with Maurice State. Obviously, don't feel too confident, but we get it to RJ early. Anything forward is good progress for him. And coming out in this hurry up again, trying to score some points before the half. Maybe that's our problem. Maybe we just can't be in the hurry up as Maurice has to scramble for his life, takes a hit, holds onto the football, and that's a lot of work for six yards. Not entirely sure we uh, can move the ball quick enough to uh, to score on this one. B is wide open. I felt like there were other options, but we give it to Jeff Fontenot. Uh, okay, we might have turned the corner, and now we can pass downfield. And if that's the case, we could be ready to catch fire against this defense. Stepping back, right bumper is open. It's a tough throw. Stone can't hold on through the contact. Oh, Maury's got it there, but the wide receiver couldn't finish it. Stone is usually pretty good despite the last name. He's got very solid hands, but just couldn't do it that time. A, a tough throw. Palmer gets it, breaks the tackle. Can't get into the end zone, but it's a first and goal. No need to pass it here again. We don't care who scores the touchdowns as long as we're scoring, and it's Derek Bentley into the end zone. Just the second time the team has found the end zone, but the first time the offense has found the, the end zone, the minute and 17 left in the half. I mean, to be fair, this did have trap game written all over it, but I expect more. The good thing the defense is working well so far. Solid return for these guys is 30 yards. Man, minute and 11 all their timeouts. We're not necessarily safe here. The defense has only given up 47 yards, I believe that said, and does have a turnover. But I don't know if I feel comfortable with that. This one going to be a run up the middle. Logan just ran right past him. Myron Hughes gets 11 yards. The call to run the draw there, literally perfect against our defense at the moment. That's pretty brutal. First and 10, rubbing my eye, stepping back, and it's Logan getting beat by the tight ends. Well, the dime package wasn't working. We're going to move up to the quarter. Just see what we can do. Logan in the spy, trying to guard something over the middle. Whitaker, oh, he dropped it. We got so lucky. Tried to jump the route, and it didn't work. Thankfully, we stay alive. I got to bring a blitz here, right? 
try to bring some pressure here, get people into position. Safety's out of the way. They're running it up the middle, and they got the first down. They've taken two timeouts as I just don't know how confident I feel. I could see them going on the ground again. It would be kind of foolish, I think, but I could see it as they are going to get sacked, and it's time for us to start taking our timeouts. Remember, we started this game with the football, so the fact that we only have 14 points is really, really disappointing. Second and 18. I wouldn't mind them completing this. Green, okay, knocks them out of bounds. That'll stop the clock. Third and five. And on this one, we got to try and get pressure. 43 seconds. I think they're in field goal range or at least very close. And over the middle, it's incomplete. He had it in his hands, but it gets jarred loose. And these guys are going to elect to go for it. I'm going to play this really risky and expect a pass. If they put it on the ground, we're in trouble. Pressure trying to get to the quarterback. Over the middle, he has more open. And he's got the catch for the first down. Maybe uh, just the three-man rush isn't going to get it done. We'll try and bring Logan. Uh, these guys are doing a really good job. Pressure not quite on the quarterback. And look at that. Dude. These crossing routes are unstoppable for these guys at the moment in our man coverage. Hoosiers absolutely embarrassing us. 20 seconds, and it's uh, at the 11-yard line. We need a turnover. I don't know if we'll get one, especially because literally all they're doing is just throwing it over the middle, and we can't stop it. Something has got to stop. Somebody's got to be there to do it, and that's a touchdown with one second on the clock. Oh, that was an incredibly frustrating drive. Well, we have a chance to get to 21 points at the half, but it's going to be near impossible. RJ Rivera not on the field. Not sure if that's an injury or a stamina concern. And look, <laughs> we can't get a single block on the return. This is, uh, as far as I'm concerned, a disaster of a game. This is not going the way we would hope. 14-7 into the locker rooms. We need about 10 more touchdowns in this game, and I don't see where it's going to come from. The offense is going to have to turn it into gear and the defense is going to have to figure something out because that last drive was inexcusable for the number six team in the country. You can't let Indiana come into your house and run a two minute drill on you that easily. Uh, just brutal. Got things to figure out, but hopefully we can work on it and get it done in the second half. As Clark gets this game underway, if you're enjoying the video, please hit the like button and subscribe if you enjoy this kind of content. Nearing 5,000 subs if we haven't passed it by the time this video goes out. And it's time to return to the old ways of uh, not letting these guys run on us. London, not able to get there, but Logan is as they hand it off to the fullback for two. Where I'm hoping for like a record setting amount of points in this second quarter. Feels like a run to the left and quarterback keeps it. We drop him for a loss of a yard. Just like that, we have them in this third and nine. They could go on the ground. They would be foolish to do so. Maybe a screen. Uh, the problem is I can't get to the quarterback. And oh, pass gets tipped as he's throwing it. Maybe a chance to intercept it. But it is a quick three and out. The best news on that is that they took less than 40 seconds on that opening drive of the third quarter. Um, you know, I really do feel bad for essentially discounting Indiana as an opponent at all in this game. But if we're being honest, uh, scoring the points matters a lot more to us than winning this game. So we'll step up with the offense on the field, and they need to go quick. We got good field position after the return, but the defense shuts us down on first down. RJ Rivera just seemingly unable to get anything done. Trying to go Wisconsin power on this one. If we can get out towards the edge with any sort of blocking, it would be useful. But the offensive line, this is a 4 and 3, 74 overall Indiana, and we can't even run the ball. What on earth is going on in this game right now? We're looking for Verts. I don't even know if uh, we can throw that. Please don't tell me Bentley went out of bounds. He catches it. Can't make a man miss, but he gets inside the red zone. I personally think this drive should have been over five plays ago, but we're trying anyways here. First and 10, the play action waiting. Waiting, got to get outside the pocket. Chris Rucker's wide open in the end zone, but I don't think I can get it there, and I almost throw it an interception. I just didn't feel confident making that throw and then made it way too late anyways. If you're Chris Rutger, you almost think about uh, transferring from the team after that one. You will never see a man more wide open in the end zone, but here we are, second and 10, stepping back, needing it to score something outside the pocket. I just, I can't do anything right right now. They're stopping the scramble well. They're covering us in, in space. 
Uh, I'm getting bamboozled. It's as simple as that as... Right, bumper's open. Oh, my gosh. If that would have been intercepted, I would have lost my mind. Maurice can't get it over the linebacker, and it's fourth and ten. Uh, I'm taking the points. Uh, I This might seem foolish, but we're kicking the field goal. One more field goal, and then a bunch of touchdowns, and it gets us to 69. And desperate times call for desperate measures because we're going on side kicks the rest of this game. All it takes is one recovery, and there it is. Okay, things have just turned around. Avery Binkley, the first one to be able to control the football, and now 404 left in the third. Something crazy could happen here. Trying to wait outside the pocket. I don't know if we can get it down there far enough. Fontano couldn't come down with it. Got it in his hands, but it gets broken up. That was what I would like to call an incredibly risky pass. Uh, but here we are, still alive. Handing it off, looking for some blocks for RJ Rivera. He gets us a first down. And we'll just continue to build off of that momentum. Waiting, waiting, right bumper coming free. Tyler comes down with it. I have no idea who this is holding onto the football, but Mike Tyler gets 19 yards. I actually do think that we called his name late uh, last week. So he's had some sort of work. Somebody's going to be wide open. A, maybe. I'll just run it. Pick up A. Don't have to make a risky throw. I know that I have guys open on every single play where we've done that. As Bentley just trucked the defensive lineman to get the first down. The problem is, I just am worried about throwing interceptions. We already have one turnover in the game. We can't afford any more. Murray State, plenty of space. B is open. B is still open. Jody Gentry caught it, but he goes out of bounds. They don't call that a touchdown? I don't know about that. Well, let's not waste any more time dilly-dallying. Just let Maurice try to get in. Hopefully no injury. Diving over the line into the end zone. Shoot the artillery. Try to blow up Indiana or something. And we are desperate for this XP. So just keep going with these onside kicks. I'm a fan of both of them. Oh, that one got touched by somebody before Doucette actually picked it up. There was a chance that we were going to recover that. I know that this gives Indiana good field position, but it kind of works well in two different ways. One, there's fewer yards for them to be able to gain. And second, uh, we don't mind them scoring, but it could force them into a kick six situation. First down, they decided to go on the ground. That obviously didn't work all that well for them. Second down, looks like they're going to try to hand it off again. And good job pulling him down just after a gain of three. So we're going to get a little bit risky with it. On third and six, just keeping the man coverage. They're going to go play action pressure. Trying to get to the quarterback. Logan missed the tackle. Oh, my user. It's exactly what we didn't want to have happen. But it happens anyways. Royal, good job. We brought the pressure. Only gave up a yard. Every single one of these plays that goes by, I just get more and more worried about the amount of clock. Like, we can't stop this running back. Tried to go for the strip there. Didn't really matter. Got the tackle. 16 yards. Myron Hughes is seemingly unstoppable at the moment. So, you know, that's pretty fun. This one's going to be a quarterback keeper. We'll drop him for a loss of three. I just, like, I've never been so disappointed in our team, I don't think. Even on games where, like, we lost when we shouldn't have. It hasn't been this brutal. Thankfully, the quarterback, I don't know if that was just a bad pass or he was getting rid of it, but incomplete third and 13. We're going to go with a little dime, cover one lurk, and hope for the best. I just feel like those throws over the middle have hurt us more than anything deep, and, well, Whitaker was supposed to be there to stop that, and he was absolutely worthless. We could not have gotten pressure to that quarterback any quicker, and here we are. Touchdown. <laughs> Our, does our defense suck? This is the same defense that has dominated teams for the past few weeks. And you're going to tell me they struggle here against an Indiana team that's missing their starting quarterback. Sometimes you really just got to wonder what the heck's actually going on with this team. Why is going to come open? Doesn't matter. Probably should have sat in the pocket, but I was worried about that linebacker deep. This is just so... Like, they have almost as many total yards as us. Uh... It is what it is. Chris Rutger picked off. Well, I don't know how he came down with that. <laughs> That's a miracle. Gotta be honest. I think that the dream of uh, picking up as many points as we need is definitely out the window. But uh, who knows? Maybe we can do something. Gentry came down with it. All right. Minute and 26 left in the third. Let's get to the end zone. Just saw that he had the one-on-one. -on -one, decided to throw up the 50-50 ball. And it worked in our favor. Love to see that. RJ Rivera over the middle. 
touchdown. Well, it's theoretically possible, but we are not even halfway there to our scoring goals. Is so. <laughs> it's a really good kick straight to Ron Johnson the third, but a little illegal touching. A little better awareness from him probably wouldn't have hurt. Uh, that's just the way things go. This one's going to be a rush. We brought a blitz, and yet, because it's Myron Hughes, he'll get five yards. I mean, like, he only has 50 total, but for us, that's uh, absolutely atrocious. So I don't know how to feel about that. Quarterback, plenty of time sitting in the pocket. Th his pass protection is actually phenomenal. Look at that. Whitaker gets the interception, though. He sneaks in front, stays on his feet, picks up a block, and Whitaker could maybe do something here. He gets another block. He gets around the corner, and Chris Whitaker, is he going to have another pick six on the game? That's exactly what we needed from the strong safety. All of a sudden, he has become something else on this defense. And let's talk about the blocking on that return as well. This is going to make things look a little bit interesting, but we're going to go triple option. Uh, I think technically that is the correct call, although the way that they're set up, I don't think we can run that. So we'll just uh, set up and look for something else. Stepping back to throw, roll outside the pocket. Maurice just barely got in. I, I saw RJ was wide open, but sometimes it's easier to do it with your own legs. Just like that, 39 to 14 with another onside kick attempt. I think we just need a couple or two more two-point conversions. That'll equal the, the other field goal that we needed. It's uh, quick maths right here. I would love another defensive turnover. Uh, I would praise it. I don't think we're going to see it, but you just never know. Stepping back, this looks like a screen of some sort. Over the middle, I left my guy. Aaron Doucette, five yards. This is just weird all over the place. Let's flip this one real quick. See if we can get there. Try to bring Napoleon Sandcastle on a little blitz. No, I flipped it. I don't know if I flipped it too late. Somebody's going to be wide open, and of course it's an out route. I guess the big positive at this point is that they're in a hurry up again. So maybe they can do, or they think they can do something. False start kind of helps us. It's uh, 39 to 14 at this stage in the game. 30 points necessary. This one thrown away. Second and 15, looking good. I think honestly, the most impressive part about uh, this Indiana offense is that they are just preventing me from using my way to the quarterback, which is usually uh, a relatively easy way to do it. Playing too soft a coverage on Bruce Moore there gets him 11. Let's see if we can press up this coverage here. Feels like it's going to be a run. Quarterback kept it. That looked like a broken play, and we couldn't do anything to get there. End of the third quarter, 39-14. You would think we would be happy with the score, but, like, I'm on the verge of absolutely raging right now. Let's we'll see what we can do in the fourth quarter, I guess. We got six minutes to score four touchdowns and get two two-point conversions. I don't know about you guys, but given my track record, I don't know if we can do that, especially, oh my gosh, this running back is incredible. Trying to give so many different looks, trying to do anything we can to get the stop, and it just hasn't been enough all game long. Logan, oh, we almost get the interception. Oh, great defense just doesn't quite work out. You love to see that pressure as we will try to bring a blitz on this one. No coverage over the middle, needing this to be a run. It is a run, but <laughs> why would I think that us bringing a blitz would actually stop a run? Because uh, they just had a huge gap to run through. Well, they're going to go for an onside kick. We'll wait and see what happens. The good news for this, I guess, is that we could have really, really quick drives. Both teams onside kicking in the fourth quarter. Starting this drive in plus territory you never know they could give up something quick a is open brian curtis gets a quick first down this one has the potential to be one of the highest scoring fourth quarters of all time a is kind of open curtis comes down with it and steps out that'll stop the clock for us and just again trying to score especially before the uh five minute mark rj rivera can't do anything oh my gosh our lines are struggling today if one of our guys doesn't get open on this play, we are having troubles. B should be there. Fontenot holds on to it for the first and goal inside the five. We're going to need a good push from the offensive line here. Halfback slash. The hole is there. RJ hits it. 102 rushing yards on the day for the team. That'll get us to 45, potentially 47 points here. 
I just wish that I felt confident with any of this because I, I just really don't. Um, let's do that with Jody Gentry. Bring in Stone in motion. Gonna obviously look to run with uh, Maurice. He's got the space. He's got to just walk in. 47-21. So three touchdowns and a two-point conversion remaining for us to hit the magic number. <laughs> oh, something else here, huh? Another onside kick, not recovered in our favor. Five minutes left in the game. At this point, it, it honestly might be prudent just to let them score. I, I can't do that just uh, because it would hurt our defensive rankings so much, but like it would be pretty incredible. I mean, I don't know if we're going to be able to stop them anyways. I don't know how it's taken me this long, but I think I might have figured out why we're struggling. We let them wear like a gray-based camo onto our gray turf field. Yeah, I mean, we can't even see them. No wonder our defense is struggling. All I see is some red helmets floating in the air with some red numbers. <laughs> First and 10. This one, a play action. Pass incomplete. Gotta say, I'm incredibly impressed with this uh, Indiana quarterback. He is just zipping the ball around at a moment's notice. The run out towards the edge is not stopped. He got eight yards there. These two backs just are like almost unstoppable. They will step back, looking to throw Avery Rawls, trying to get some pressure. Green somehow gets the diving deflection to force the fourth down. Now, of course, they have to go for this, but you're feeling pretty confident at this point. I'm calling this a run to the right. We could see something a lot weirder. It is going to be a pass. Somebody's going to be open, but we get the sack. So the defense can hold, apparently. It just takes a miracle. The problem is we now have the ball in our own 15, which is uh, just a long ways to go when you're trying to score as quick as we are. But guys getting open frequently is pretty nice. We could potentially score before four minutes. I mean, at least if you're a fan of uh, the Grey Boys and you paid for a ticket to this game, you're getting your money's worth. Stone coming out of the massive bodies to catch that one 22 yards downfield. I'm not entirely certain, but I feel like somebody might have gotten injured on that play. So hopefully we didn't lose anybody too important. B is open. Not the best throw. Jody Gentry can't make the guy miss, but I think he did step out. Very fortunate at the moment to uh, have as much time on the clock as we do. I don't know what I'm doing. Right bumper was wide open for like five seconds. I think like 90% of the reason that we're struggling to score is I just can't make the correct decision at all today. Too many mistakes. Honestly, I tried to pitch it there. <laughs> I was getting real risky. You think they could stop the triple option twice in a row? Bentley and Goodwin are the two options we have to give the ball to. Goodwin... Does a good job getting eight yards after the handoff. Let's step up, looking to pass. Chris Rutgers going to have the one-on-one. -on -one. We're throwing up the 50-50 ball to the back of the end zone. And he's going to come down with it. Chris Rutger looking good as Maurice Tate sets a school record for passing touchdown in the season. He just keeps adding his name to the record books week in and week out. Well, we just need one more two-point conversion. And then we're looking pretty good. Uh, we also have Jody Gentry just across the goal line, potentially to pass to. I don't see anybody. I don't see anybody just trying to get rid of it. That's going to complicate things quite a bit. So Stone is out with a knee bruise. So uh, we did lose a decent wide receiver. And we need 16 points, uh, which is not an easy score to accumulate in football. We're going to have to score two touchdowns and convert two two-point conversions. All of that, of course, with the time constraint of uh, three minutes and 22 seconds. So who knows how this is going to work. They're going to hand it off. Whitaker gets the tackle on Aaron Doucette for a loss of a yard, but the clock will now start to run. Not sure if we've made the right adjustments. Kind of expecting more runs. They will hand it off up the middle. <laughs> Our defensive line is Swiss cheese on the run. We could be absolutely obliterated here depending on what they do. Calling it a run up the middle. They do hand it off, but it's out towards the edge, and look at that. The blocking too good. He's going to take off into the end zone. We just, like, we can't stop him on defense. Like, if we gave up 28 points to any of the other teams that we've played recently, I would be really disappointed, let alone against Indiana. Well, they are still going for these haunt side kicks. 53-28. Well, if we fail to recover one of these... 
it's just going to be heartbreak. I know that we're limited on time, but I think this is the perfect time to call for it. A little read option. Maurice Tate able to keep it if he has the blocking and if he can make the right moves. That's perfect. We get 10 yards. And we reestablish the running threat. And now we can step back to throw their defense out of position. They're bringing a little bit of a blitz with the safety. A is open. It's Chris Rutger holding on to it for a first and goal. This is an awfully quick drive. Curious to see if we can finish it off in time. I don't feel confident about their defensive set. And yeah, Bentley's going to lose like nine yards on the play. Should have just eaten the time loss when we had the easier opportunity to do so. Now it's Maurice Tate. I, I got to take a timeout. Not in the right formation. Unable to get the positive yards. We're just moving backwards doing it. So it just makes more sense for us to take the timeout. Save as much clock as possible. And then, oh, man, they left a lot of space up the middle. I got to scramble that one in. Let's see what we can do. We might have to be kicking a field goal at some point if we don't convert this two-point conversion. A is open. Curtis. Yeah, he didn't get there. So we're 10 points short. We need to score twice now. Touchdown and a field goal. This is one of the wildest rides I've been on in a while. It's going to make for a really long episode as that was a weird bounce right into Stovall's hands. And we're going to be expecting runs on essentially every single play, although they just step back to pass. That's not what we needed to have happen. How about a zone blitz? Could that do the job? Another run up the middle. Another first down. <laughs> it just hurts that we can't get the stop when we know it's coming. This one, a handoff out towards the edge, thankfully gets shut down. But the time is just running so dangerously low. Second and 12. I feel like we should absolutely be expecting a run on this play. But I'm not certain what exactly to expect at all from this team. So that's the second tackle. I'm just not going to spend the time out yet. These guys are still in the hurry up. So not taking the time out, I think, saves us a little bit of time in the end. And Smith can't quite get there. We got him in a fourth down. The question is, do they go for it? As they took a timeout. This is like the worst case scenario. Fourth and three, they take a timeout. I have to worry about them going for it. Trying to worry. I, like, I don't know. Do they pass it? Do they run it? I'm kind of expecting the pass. They do step back. And Lewis gets the stop. Oh, that's one of the most clutch open field tackles we've had all game. We have 57 seconds and a dream. And I would be lying if I said I wasn't even thinking about uh, just letting them score. We'll see what happens as Chris Rucker might have a step on his man. Chris Rucker can't come down with it. Oh, it was in his hands and he dropped it. I apologize if anybody doesn't enjoy this type of football, but this is what we have to work with. And it's what I need as B is wide open. Fontenot held on to that one. Maurice Tate might end up passing for over 400 yards at the end of this one. I'm kind of looking at Mike Tyler on that uh, little wheel route. I don't know what you would call that, but he's wide open. Touchdown. 405 passing yards. <laughs> this is going to be 66 to 28. Well, we need a field goal. If we don't recover this onside kick, we're going to let him score. We did recover it, but it's illegal touching. That's kind of a shame. I don't know what to do here. We need to get uh, Ron Johnson's eyes checked because that is the second time he's done that to this as we are coming out in the field goal block. <laughs> I don't know if that's going to do anything to help our cause. Maybe we can get an interception, but i am got to let him score. It's the only way for us to get to the 69. We desperately need it. Please recover this onside kick. That's all I can ask for at this point. As we do have it. I don't know who that is, but uh, I'm happy this is almost over. This is the most annoying goal I've ever set for myself, and I'm going to pay the price. Normally, I'm done uh, with an episode or done with the game at about 50 minutes left in an episode or 50 minutes recorded. We're at like an hour and 10 minutes. This is so much extra time. I got to take a time out. What am I doing? I, the problem here is I don't know uh, where we need to go for field goal range. So still looking to throw down field or maybe run or maybe just wait and throw the ball away. 16 seconds. Imagine we don't score a uh, field goal here. I can like already just feel the embarrassment if I fail to do this. Uh, we're going to try triple option just because worst case scenario we can set up the field goal. Bentley 
got into a decent spot, 11 yard, or 11 seconds remaining. At this point, just kind of looking to get into the middle of the field, Brian Palmer. Oh no, the sack, we got to take the timeout. Second and 18. I don't know if we can do this. We have eight seconds left. I might have just made the wrong decision, but we're throwing it up. Robertson can't come down with it. And now we're gonna have to kick the longest field goal of uh, Clark's career. We have, thankfully, a five mile an hour tailwind, but it's a 51 yarder. I didn't get all of it. Then it's short. Even if we got all of it, I think it was still short. One second left. The dream is dead. All that for nothing. Oh my gosh. Uh, just bad clock management, I think is the case on that one. I don't think we did anything else wrong. Uh, how is it that it was so difficult to do this against a 74 overall team is my question. <laughs> we win the game, but at what cost? Uh, I'm sorry, you guys, that this is like a 50-minute video. <laughs> I'm going to hate myself editing this one. Maurice Tate passes for over 400 yards. There's definitely an asterisk next to that one because anytime we're playing a hurry up for that much of the game and going for onside kicks, does any of it really count? 66 to 35, we improve to 7 to 1, maybe 8 and 1. I don't know if that's updated. Uh, I mean, who knows? Maybe the people that don't watch this game will be impressed and we can get ranked a little bit higher. Well, that was uh, something interesting. We score If we could have scored any points in the first quarter, we could have done that easily, and it wouldn't have been as embarrassing. But uh, 25 in the third, 27 in the fourth, not enough to get it done. Uh, we ran for 122, passed for 413, but we looked embarrassing, allowing Indiana to do as well as they did. Uh, we did win the turnover battle for once, only threw one stupid interception, and it was like on a pitch. So it was more of a fumble than an interception, but we win it nonetheless. Maurice Tate. A fake player of the game with his 26 uh, for 40 passing for 413 yards and five total touchdowns. But it's Chris Whitaker. Five tackles, a tackle for loss, but two interceptions. And more importantly, two pick sixes. The fact that we overshadowed a two pick six game with the way that we played, it just hurts me on the inside. So that will put us to eight and one on the season. And we can just advance the week to week 11 where again, we play at home against Northwestern, a game that we should be able to win. But I mean, after this week, if we come out and play our normal game and get caught off guard, you never know what could happen. I'm kind of hoping we can go back to the past few weeks where the defense just shuts them down and maybe we're, you know, close to a shutout. And oh my goodness, the guys that we had come visit, maybe some of them show up. An 80 overall wide receiver in time and Brooks. 79 overall kicker Cooper Gentry and the 76 overall defensive tackle Jalen Smith all show up. We do get locked out by Elliot Erdman. That happened way sooner than I thought, and I don't think that we leveled up. So that has me really, really worried. We got a ton of XP, signed a top 10 prospect, but we're still uh, 15 or 1900 points or XP short of uh, the XP that we needed to level up. So I just don't know if it was even going to be a possibility, but that, that hurts. And we have a lot of recruiting points to allocate, but unfortunately that's going to have to wait till the next episode. If you enjoyed this one, please feel free to hit the like button. Subscribe if you want to see more content like this in the future. And then head down to the description where you can find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster. It's also links to my Twitter, our community Discord, and the College Football Revamp mod if you're trying to get it for yourself. All that being said, though, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the Gray Boys, wherever you are. Have a good night, or have a good morning, and we'll see you later. Adios. Special thanks to our Tier 3 members, Durham Finch, Avery Binkley, and Warmaster777.